This video is all about the power of the pause, as in taking breaks. Wait, what? Isn't this a YouTube channel all about time management and productivity? It sure is, but breaks are a really important part of that. And I'm betting whether you work from home or you report to an office that you're not taking enough breaks during your workday. In this video, we'll talk about how taking breaks actually makes you more productive, plus five types of breaks that you can start taking today. Before we get started, take a break and click that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my new videos. If you're looking for more resources on managing your time and being productive with a purpose, you better believe I've got more coming your way. Now, let's get started. Afternoons are just the worst. In terms of productivity, I mean. And there's actual research to back this up. If you watched my video on seven simple productivity hacks, then you already know what I'm talking about. The lowest energy point in the day for most people is 2.55 p.m. Around this time, we're more likely to make mistakes, be dishonest, get involved in a traffic accident, and even forget to wash our hands. And it's not because we're personally at our worst at this time, again, it's an energy thing. When you're low on energy, you find it hard to focus and concentrate or even stay awake. While most of us experience this energy drop in the early afternoon after lunch, we actually need to make time for breaks throughout the day. If we don't take enough breaks during the day, our work suffers as a result. One study actually found that the ideal break length for peak productivity is 17 minutes off for every 52 minutes worked. Yep, that's 52 minutes on, 17 minutes off. That sounds like a lot, right? You've got some work to do here. But on average, in an eight hour workday, people are only productive for three hours a day. Three out of eight. That's wild. If you think about it, we're just not programmed to concentrate for eight hours nonstop. Without breaks, we start to suffer from decision fatigue, a lack of focus, and even digital eye strain from staring at our screens so much. That's the mental and physical impact of avoiding breaks. We also lose time getting distracted or interrupted and then losing focus. In fact, it takes around 29 minutes to regain your focus after you've been interrupted while you're working. In short, breaks strengthen our concentration, our decision-making, and our memories. Have I convinced you just how important breaks are yet? Good. Let's talk about five simple types of breaks that you can start taking today. And by the way, I learned about these five types of breaks in Dan Pink's book, When the Scientific Secrets of Perfect Timing. The first type of break is called a micro break. A micro break is a short break that lasts for only a few minutes. You might take a micro break if you're really deep into a project and focused on what you're doing. You don't wanna bust out of your workflow, but you still wanna take a short break so you can feel refreshed. Here are three ways that you can take a micro break. Number one, use the 20-20-20 rule. Set a timer for 20 minutes when you start a task. When the timer goes off, look at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds. This rests your eyes and improves your posture, and it gives your mind a quick break from whatever task you're doing. Number two, take a water walk. Grab a glass or a tumbler of water and bring it back to your workspace. Or go get a refill. You get hydration, motion, and restoration all in one. Number three, move and stretch. Stand up if you can. Roll your shoulders. Bend your neck from side to side. Wiggle or dance it out. Do a full body tension releasing stretch. Feels good, right? Speaking of movement, that takes us to our next type of break moving breaks. A moving break doesn't have to be long to be effective. One study on breaks found that walking for just five minutes an hour boosts energy levels, sharpens focus, and improves your mood. Taking a five minute walk once an hour can even be more effective than one single 30 minute walk. Here are three ways that you can take a moving break. First, 
You can take a five minute walk once an hour like the study says. Take your dog outside, walk around the block, or set a timer and tidy up around your house for five minutes. Second, do some yoga. The beautiful thing about yoga is that there are all sorts of movements for all experience levels, body types, and abilities. You can even find free yoga videos and classes here on YouTube. Finally, do something fun. Drop and do two push-ups if you think push-ups are fun. Go all out and have a dance party to one of your favorite songs. Put on some roller skates and skate around the block. It's up to you. Okay, how are you doing with all of this information on breaks? Are you still with me? Let's take one now. Pause for a second. Breathe deeply in and out. Stretch. That felt good, right? Let's keep going. The third type of break is one of my favorites, a nature break. Going outside to take a break is one of the most refreshing, replenishing activities we can give ourselves. People who take short walks outdoors generally feel better than people who walk indoors. And I know this might be tricky depending on what the weather is like where you live. If you're in the South during the summer, like I am here in Louisiana, grab a glass of ice water to take with you. Breathe in and out for a few minutes and then go back inside before the humidity crushes you. For my friends in the Midwest or up North where it's all snowy, you can do the same thing. Slip on your boots and put on your warmest coat. All it takes is a minute or two of standing outside and breathing in that fresh air. If you have more time and the weather is cooperating, here are three ways that you can take a nature break. Walk around the block, simple and effective. Sit outside for a few minutes. You might eat your lunch, read a book, or just enjoy the fresh air. Hang out with some plants. It sounds funny, but if you can't get outside, bring the outside in. Plants can mimic the feeling of being outdoors. Being near something green and living can be restorative. Let's move on to break number four, social breaks. And I don't mean social media breaks. A break with a buddy can sometimes be more motivating than going solo. If you have a hard time remembering to take breaks, have an accountability buddy help you out. And if you tend to have a preference for introversion, I totally get that. Alone time might feel best for you, but give social breaks a try. Research shows that social breaks can reduce stress and physical strain. They can also boost job happiness. Here are three ways you can take social breaks. First, talk to someone you haven't in a while. Write them a note or give them a call. Second, schedule regular walks with a colleague. You get the benefits of social breaks and moving breaks at the same time. If you work from home, find another person who works remotely. Take a walk while you chat on the phone. And third, grab a coffee or a tea and bring one back for a friend. You can surprise your office mate or another work from home friend with a tasty beverage and some conversation. All right, we've come to our fifth and final type of break, mental breaks. It is so important to give your brain a rest. Concentration and deep work are tough. That's why they're the most important, most valued work that we do. Mental breaks help you clear out the cobwebs, improve your problem solving, and let your mind be free to wander, which is vital for creativity and innovation. Here are three ways to take a mental break. First, meditate. Search guided meditation online for ideas or try an app that makes it easy, like Headspace or Calm. I actually use both. Second, try some controlled breathing. Inhale deeply for four seconds. Hold it for two seconds. And exhale slowly for six seconds. Repeat or lighten up. Read internet memes and send them to your friends. Watch cute animal videos. Unlikely animal pairings get me every time. Simply give your mind a break and have a laugh. And there you have it. Now you know what breaks can do for your mind and body. And you know five different types of breaks that you can start working into your schedule. Micro breaks, moving breaks, nature breaks, social breaks, and mental breaks. And while there's no such thing as a perfect break, you can combine all five of these at once and get pretty dang close. Take a short walk outside, 
with a friend and talk about something else besides work. And consider leaving your phone behind. Regardless of what you do and how long you take your break, I encourage you to go tech free. I know, I know, what are breaks for if not for checking Instagram? But here's the thing, if your break still includes tech, the same thing you use to reply to an email or chat with a client or get work done on a screen, your brain doesn't register it as a nourishing break. It still counts as work to your brain. Take a true tech-free, work-free break for the full restorative benefits. You can do it, my friend. I know you can. Now, what's your favorite way to take a break? Which type of break from this video will you start with? Tell me in the comments so I can cheer you on. Thanks for watching and be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss my next video. I will see you there.